So let's hop into a demo here. Um, first off, we'll start just by using the Snowflake Cortex complete function. So in this case, we're, what we're going to do is we'll just do a simple SQL statement. And where is Snowflake's headquarters? This will take a second here. I'm running an extra small warehouse. And we get this text back. You know, it's pretty verbose here. Snowflake's headquarters is, is in Bozeman in Montana and gives us a lot of extra information about where the company was founded. So this is all knowledge that's baked into the Llama 2 model. But if we ask, you know, how many customers does Snowflake have? That's a little bit more of a moving target. And if we run this, we can see it'll say, Snowflake has not publicly disclosed the exact number of customers. But we know that that's in our SEC filings and in our 10K. So what we have here is from the marketplace, I grab data from Cybersyn the LLM training essentials. And this includes a lot of great information, including SEC filings, US patent grants, and US government contracts. And what's great about this data set is it has lots of you know, big plain text language that we can use uh, with LLMs. So what we can see in this data set here is we got a document ID. In this case, we're just looking at Snowflake's document. You know, this includes lots of other companies here. And we can see the full text of our most recent 10K here. So we've got you know, this really long bit of text here that's probably too long to, to feed in as context to an LLM without chunking it up and doing uh, retrieval augmented generation. So behind the scenes, uh, what I did is I just chunked this up. I made a bunch of, you know, took this one text document and put it into a bunch of different rows at about a thousand uh, characters a piece. And now we've got this chunk data, just smaller, more bite-sized pieces that we can use to augment our, our data and augment that LLM and give it additional knowledge. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm getting that content chunk, but I'm also using that embed text. We talked about using embed text to create embeddings that we can use with uh, vector search functions within Snowflake. So now for all of this data, I've got the chunks and the embeddings. And we can see, you know, to give you an idea of scale here, we've got almost 3.7 million chunks of data that we're going to be using and, and scanning across this um, across this, this demo here. So let's start by using the vector embeddings and vector search within Snowflake. So first question, we'll, we'll go back to how many customers does uh, the company have? And what we can do here is we can quickly get in, uh, a vector embedding of the question that we're asking and use this vector cosine distance to find relevant information. So if I run this function here, or if I run this SQL statement here, what I get is my top choice here actually has the answer to our question. As of January 31st, we have you know, 7,828 total customers. Now I pulled back 10 records here, and if I look through here, you know, this is going to talk a little bit about sales and customers. As, as I go through these, these get less and less relevant. So this shows what the vector cosine distance does is it's getting us the most relevant information at the top. And what we'll do here is you know, th this top part actually contains the information we want. So that's really powerful on its own. We could you know, create a Streamlit app, and I'll show you that in a second, that just pulls back that information from the 10K. Or what we can do is we can create a retrieval augmented generation app to feed that information from that vector search into our prompt within uh, uh, within Snowflake and use that with the complete function. So that's exactly what we'll do here. We're going to get the context and we're going to say use that same SQL statement we had above. Say use our question, embed it, and now we've got the embedding to compare it to the embedding that's on uh, our uh, Snowflake document base. And we're just going to get the most, you know, the, the top record there. We're going to get the most relevant record. And then we're going to feed that into this complete function. So once again, Llama 2, 70 billion chat. I'm going to say, using the provided context uh, to answer the question, I'm going to tell it to be uh, concise as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed that context that we retrieved using that vector search function, feed the question to it, and then say, give, give us a response. So now if I run this SQL statement, We've got a nice concise answer here. As of January 31st, 2023, the company has 7,828 customers. 
And you know, we've, we, I've also pulled along for the ride here just the, the relevant information uh, directly from the document. So that shows how within SQL, we can pull together these different cortex functions to do things like in, uh, embed text from, from uh, unstructured data in the Snowflake account, uh, embed text for the question that the users uh, are asking, find the most relevant information, and then also feed that to an LLM to get a really concise answer back and, and a summary of, of the, the data that we have out in our uh, data chunks. And Jeremy, I know we're not going to go into it, but um, from the CyberSins perspective, they were actually taking those SEC PDFs using our document AI, which then allowed them to convert all that to text. And that's how they load it in the Snowflake, right? That's correct. Yep. So that, yep. like Josh mentioned, we're not going to cover document AI too much, but the idea behind document AI is take documents like PDF and extract structured information from them. So they were able to extract things like what's the company name? What's the full text of that? Uh, what's the full text of the 10K filing? And make that available just as a snowflake table. And we're taking a step further to make it easier to use and scan and, and get information from that data. So what we've shown so far is how we've made these advanced capabilities available to analysts, people who know, you know a little bit of SQL who can you know, chunk up this data, or you know, maybe the data comes free chunked, but use these vector functions and use uh, the the LLM complete function to to get an answer back from the data. So that that's a good first step. But what we also want to talk about is how can we use Snowflake and Streamlit to make this data available to everybody, even if they're not a SQL user. And this is really how Streamlit is really the a big part of the recipe of how we deliver apps within minutes within Snowflake. So let's start out with a quick overview of what Streamlit is. Uh, Streamlit is an open source Python library for app development. And it's, it's really powerful to turn data and AI models in interactive applications and power stakeholders to self-serve insights. Uh, what I'll also show you is there's a side-by-side -side code editor in Snowflake, so you can develop these right within your Snowflake uh, environment and see real-time how your application is turning out. So the skill set that you need to create a Streamlit app is about the same skill set as you would need to maybe work within a Python notebook for data science. So it's, it's pretty basic. Uh, it's a pretty basic Python, and the idea is let's allow people to quickly create applications that are easy to use and democratize some of these advanced capabilities that we have built into Snowflake. Thinking about where Streamlit is a good fit, first off, where the app components all live in Snowflake, once again, this is about let's bring our work to where the data lives rather than vice versa. If you've got your all your data in Snowflake and it's governed and it's secured, let's run Streamlit right within your Snowflake account within that security perimeter. Uh, it's also a good uh, fit where the app is for internal use only, where app users could have a Snowflake account. The exception to that is with native apps, which we're not going to get into too much today, but you can also share Streamlit applications as part of a native application. And it's also a good fit where you can live without JavaScript, React, and CSS. This is kind of the trade-off between flexibility and complexity. These are really simple to create. For that, you do give up a little bit of flexibility. You're not going to have some of the uh, pixel-perfect capabilities that you would if you're creating a full uh, application um, you're, using, you're using JavaScript and HTML and CSS. The idea here is let people quickly create applications with a, a pretty minimal skill set. And sometimes these are things that democratize data within the organization. Sometimes these wind up being uh, minimum viable products to prove out an idea before you go and create an app. It's really powerful, and there's a lot of different use cases for using Streamlit. So hopping into Streamlit here, so the Streamlit app was was sleeping. But what I did here is I created an application where you could ask questions of any of these these 10Ks. So these are all the companies that we had 10Ks for out in that Cyberson data. Um, but so we're not picking on anybody besides Snowflake. We'll just go ahead and ask uh, questions. Snowflake here, and we can ask that same question we had. You know, um, 
how many customers does the company have? And then we get that answer. As of January 31st, 2023, the company has 7,828 customers. I've also included here where you could actually get the, the plain text from the original document as well. So you can verify that information. Once again, uh, you know, wanting to make be fully transparent about where the data is coming from, but also give concise answers. To show what it looks like to de develop this Streamlit application, um, you would run this right within your Snowflake account. You've got this um, code editor that lives right alongside there. And this entire application is 67 lines of code. And most of it is the exact same code that we saw in the, the SQL demo, where you, you ask the question, we're getting that question from the, the input here. We are embedding, getting embeddings for that question and comparing it to the embeddings in our table with all the, the knowledge that we have. And then we're feeding that into the LLM. So once again, most of this code is actually just the same SQL that we had before showing you that it's really simple to create these applications. And now anybody in the organization that you can give access to this application can run these capabilities without needing to know SQL, without needing to know how to run an LLM or provision the infrastructure.